Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today I'm super excited for today's video because we're going to be talking about Reputation, which is an album that I personally love. And Reputation is one of Taylor's most memorable and, dare I say, most controversial eras. Around that time, she was coming off the massive, massive success of 1989, which was Taylor's first pop album. It produced global hits like Bad Blood, Shake It Off, and Blank Space. 1989 was one of the decade's best-selling albums and easily an era for the pop culture history books, so you can imagine that expectations were extremely high for Taylor's next era. And before we get into unpacking the Reputation era, this is just a quick reminder that these eras analyzed videos aren't just album reviews, but a retrospective of the era in its entirety. But before we get into the Reputation era, let's go ahead and take a word from today's sponsor, HelloFresh. So one thing that I really am trying to get better at is getting into, you know, that there's food at home mentality because I feel like I'm ordering delivery almost every night. So if you're like me and you're trying to eat well and save some money, HelloFresh definitely has you covered. You get to cut back on expensive takeout and you'll love how easy and affordable it is to make a restaurant quality meal right from your own kitchen. Also, HelloFresh is 25% cheaper than grocery stores and takeout and who doesn't love saving money? HelloFresh's step-by-step -step recipes are very easy to follow and I personally love how they include pictures in them. You also get the exact amount of each ingredient you need, that way you're not stuck trying to use just like some random specific ingredient just because you feel guilty about throwing it out. HelloFresh has honestly been a lifesaver as someone who lives alone and doesn't always have a lot of time on her hands but still likes to eat well. But now with HelloFresh, I can just choose my recipes in advance and get meals and snacks delivered right to my doorstep. Personally, I'm a fan of the fast and fresh recipes, which still offer filling portions and robust flavors, but they're ready in 15 minutes or less. If you're ready to begin using HelloFresh, you can go to HelloFresh.com and use my code Naomi21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. You can choose from calorie or carb smart options or even customize select meals by swapping out proteins, upgrading proteins, or even adding protein to a veggie dish. Again, definitely don't forget to go to HelloFresh.com and use my code Naomi21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back to talking about reputation. To contextualize reputation era, it's important, of course, to talk about some of the events leading up to the album's release. For years, Taylor was in the midst of creative conflicts with her label Big Machine Records. According to her, they didn't even want her to go in a pop direction for 1989. Around the same time, it came out that Taylor hadn't re-signed with Big Machine and she only owed the label one more album. When the 1989 world tour ended in December of 2015, Taylor announced she would be taking a break from music. She said, I think I should take some time off. I think people might need a break from me. I'm going to, I don't know, hang out with my friends, write new music, maybe not write new music. I don't know. This was her first real hiatus since starting her career over a decade prior. In her own words, Taylor felt that she'd been overexposed during the 1989 era and she wanted to take some time to regroup. Still, Taylor didn't disappear entirely from the public eye. In 2016, she served as a chair for that year's Met Gala. Shortly after, her short relationship with Calvin Harris ended. It came out about a month later that Taylor had written his song, This Is What You Came For, under a pen name. In the midst of the media fallout, Calvin went on a Twitter rant accusing Taylor's team of leaking the story to make him look bad. In his tweets, he alluded to her previous feud with Katy Perry, claiming that Taylor tried to bury her. He also referenced Taylor's new relationship with actor Tom Hiddleston. This wasn't at all her fault, but it definitely didn't help Taylor's image that white supremacists decided to make her their icon. They claimed that Taylor Swift was an Aryan goddess and was waiting until Trump was elected president to share her far-right views. While most agreed it was definitely a reach to call Taylor a white supremacist, criticisms resurfaced about the fact that most of her close friends looked just like her, and the group of people she surrounded herself with wasn't very diverse. Aside from that, Taylor was also criticized for maintaining a pretty apolitical image in a climate where many didn't have that luxury. Taylor continued with music during her hiatus, albeit to a much smaller degree. She did her duet with Zayn, wrote a song for Little Big Town, and performed at the Formula One Grand Prix post-race. There was speculation that Taylor would release another album at this time, likely a greatest hits one. For years, Taylor had released albums every other year, and it was now 2016, two years since 1989. In addition, it had been 10 years since her first album, so many thought she would honor that anniversary. 
Prior to Reputation's release, Taylor's ongoing feud with Kanye West resurfaced, and this clearly influenced a lot of the album. Of course, it all started back in 2009 after Kanye interrupted Taylor Swift's acceptance speech at the VMAs. This set off a chain of events that surely neither thought would follow them for years to come. Over the years following the incident, Taylor had pretty much forgiven Kanye. In 2015, they were seen being friendly with one another at the Grammys. That summer at the VMAs, she presented Kanye with his Video Vanguard Award, even making light of his outburst six years prior. At both events, she was also friendly with Kim Kardashian, who was Kanye's wife at the time. To further confirm their mended relationship, Taylor posted an Instagram photo showing off a bouquet that Kanye had sent her, and she jokingly supported his 2020 bid for presidency. Things fell apart in 2016 when Kanye released his single Famous. The opening lines in the song read, For all my South Side that know me best, I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex. Why? I made that bitch famous. I made that bitch famous. Not only did people bristle at the joke that Kanye might sleep with Taylor or that his wife would co-sign such a lyric, but also at Kanye's assertion that he made Taylor Swift famous. Before they even crossed paths at the VMAs, Taylor was already famous and had hits under her belt. The situation definitely put eyes on Taylor, but she wasn't a nobody beforehand. To add to the creepiness of it all, the video for Famous showed several nude figures in bed with Kanye, and Taylor's was directly next to him. From the outside looking in, it appeared as if Kanye was still mocking Taylor, despite previous efforts to appear cordial with her. Kanye maintained that he called Taylor Swift for approval of the lyrics in Famous, and she'd given her blessing. Taylor's publicist, however, said Kanye never cleared those lyrics with her, and instead had called to see if she would release Famous through her Twitter account. She said that Taylor had warned Kanye against releasing a song with such a misogynistic message. At the 2016 Grammys, Taylor threw a jab at Kanye, saying, As the first woman to win Album of the Year at the Grammys twice, I want to say to all the young women out there, there will be people along the way who will try to undercut your success or take credit for your accomplishments or your fame. This seemed to imply that Taylor didn't appreciate Kanye's song, especially the claim that he made her famous. In an attempt to discredit Taylor, Kim Kardashian leaked some of Kanye's conversation with her on her Snapchat. The clip showed Kanye mentioning the line, I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex, which Taylor approved. Taylor also said that it would look good for her image to look as if she were in on the song and knew it was coming out. I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex. Oh, well, this this one is, uh, I think this is a really cool thing to have. Uh, thing to have. Uh, I know, definitely. It's like a compliment, kind of. Yeah. What I give a fuck about is just you as a person and as a friend. I want things that That's make sweet. you feel good. I don't want to do rap that makes people feel bad. Um, yeah, I mean, what, don't whatever line you think is better. It's obviously very tongue-in-cheek either way. However, and Taylor would later bring this up herself, Kanye never ran the I made that bitch famous line by her. The clips came uploaded of the conversation were edited and never showed whether Taylor had heard the I made that bitch famous line, nor her reaction if she did hear it. Still, the internet took Kim's videos as proof that Taylor was a liar. To add fuel to the fire, earlier in the day, Kim had subtweeted at Taylor and called her a snake. After fans put two and two together, Taylor's social media accounts were spammed with snake emojis and hashtag Taylor Swift is over party trended on social media. It had trended previously after the Calvin Harris tweets, but not to this extent. Hashtag Kim exposed Taylor party was also trending. Taylor tweeted an explanation of her side of the story, claiming that Kanye had never played her the song even though he had promised to. Regardless, a lot of the damage had already been done and Taylor was deemed by many to be a snake. However, in support of her, her fans did start the trending hashtag, Taylor Swift is loved party. For obvious reasons, Taylor spent the majority of 2017 under the radar. That August, she won an SA lawsuit that she filed against a Denver radio host after he groped her at a meet and greet. Taylor only saw a single dollar in damages, which she won because she wanted to win the trial as an example to other women, not for monetary gain. Taylor earned further criticism for her inclusion on Times People of the Year as one of the silence breakers of the Me Too movement. Several people felt she didn't deserve her spot because of her political passivity and feminism that many felt was shallow. Also, because Taylor was a wealthy, famous white woman, many felt that she was taking space from other women, especially women of color with smaller platforms. So I gave a lot of context leading up to Reputation, but it's important to understand that Taylor was basically persona non grata at the time. And on top of that, 1989 was such a massive era that expectations were high for Reputation. 
In late August of 2017, Taylor cleared her Instagram feed and her website. She started uploading snakes and fans quickly noticed that it was almost exactly a year after the whole snake thing started with Kim Kardashian. A couple days later, Taylor announced her next album, named Reputation, was coming in November. Taylor said Reputation was inspired by Game of Thrones. Some of the inspirations include Arya Stark's kill list, her plan with Sansa to kill Littlefinger, and Danny and Drogo's relationship. Taylor said about this, My entire outlook on storytelling has been shaped by Thrones, the ability to foreshadow stories, to meticulously craft cryptic storylines. So I found ways to get more cryptic with information and still be able to share messages with the fans. I aspire to be one one millionth of the kind of hint dropper the makers of Game of Thrones have been. Well, that didn't age well, did it? Taylor worked on two production teams for Reputation, one led by Jack Antonoff and the other one being with Max Martin and Shellback. Taylor, of course, is writing credits on all of the songs and producing credits on six of them. Aside from returning to pop, Taylor incorporates other genres like R&B, trap, EDM, and even returns to her country roots a little. Look What You Made Me Do was Reputation's first single. It was full of snake motifs, dark imagery, and promises that Taylor wasn't going to take any of the vitriol thrown at her lying down. It was Taylor's way of saying if the public was going to portray her as a villain, then she would lean into it, but on her own terms. The song had iconic lines like, I don't trust nobody and nobody trusts me, and the even more iconic, I'm sorry, the old Taylor can't come to the phone right now. Why? Oh, because she's dead. Another memorable part of the video was Taylor dressing as her past selves from previous eras. Reputation Taylor was clearly a different person from the one who told fans years ago to simply shake off the players and the haters. Taylor says herself in Look What You Made Me Do that her experiences over the years both smartened and hardened her. Fun fact, that whole pre-chorus is actually a direct reference to Arya Stark. Musically, some praise the darker, eerier sound of Look What You Made Me Do, which was different from the new sound that she'd established in 1989. The hook interpolates Wright said Fred's I'm Too Sexy, which earned the group a songwriting credit. Look What You Made Me Do earned Taylor her fifth number one single on the Hot 100, where the song stayed for three weeks. Initially, it debuted at number 77, but rose quickly. The video, which premiered at the VMAs, was at the time YouTube's most viewed video in a 24-hour period. Taylor said the track listing on Reputation is almost entirely a linear progression of how she felt while making the album. Several of the earlier songs are darker and have a more vengeful tone. They're heavier, more dramatic, and more experimental compared to Taylor's typical songs. The visuals from this part of the album are darker too, and full of both shadows and harsh lights. Reputation's opening track, Ready For It, primes the listener for the section of the album that's a whirlwind of drama, romance, and revenge. The lyrics create the vibe of some sort of high situation going on. It's almost like a dramatization of Taylor's public image at the time, one of this evil temptress manipulator that chews people up and spits them out. At the same time, Taylor expresses genuine affection that many felt was about Joe Alwyn, who was her partner at the time and still is currently. Also, in the music video, Taylor's seen sort of battling against two separate versions of herself. Ready For It has a similar villain vibe to Look What You Made Me Do, and is similarly electro-pop and EDM-influenced. Another standout from this side of the album is I Did Something Bad. In it, Taylor addresses the people who have used her and played her over the years, and how they'll get exactly what's coming to them. This song was inspired by Arya and Sansa's plan to kill Littlefinger. Taylor talks about her persecution in the media, saying, they're burning all the witches even if you aren't one. They've got their pitchforks and proof, their receipts and reasons. While this line probably references several things, it feels safe to say this is another reference to the Kim Ye situation. Taylor follows that lyric up with So Light Me Up, basically saying, if you're here to tear me down, then take your best shot. Like the other songs mentioned so far, this one is also EDM and bass heavy. It kind of sounds like an updated version of I Knew You Were Trouble, where Taylor's now the perpetrator instead of the victim. The latter half of Reputation has songs that are more romantic, vulnerable, and hopeful. In parts where she talks about love and relationships, Taylor makes it evident that a healthy relationship is kind of foreign to her and it will take some getting used to. The visuals are softer both in the lighting and color palettes and have a more eclectic, almost antique vintage sort of vibe. These are a lot more reminiscent of the real Taylor and who she is at her core when she can let her guard down. Sounds like So It Goes and Gorgeous Show a Head Over Heels Taylor Swift. But her songs now show that she has reservations about going all in too quickly, but simultaneously she still kind of wants that. And so it goes, Taylor speaks of a love that's intoxicating to the point where it feels like the other person has a rain on all of her feelings. At the same time, she describes the love as all the pieces falling into place and her being someone to keep yet someone to lose. 
Taylor's well aware that the love could end, but that's not what she wants. Gorgeous is a more tongue-in-cheek love song that sounds like Taylor's so in love that she just is overwhelmed and can't make sense of it. Fun fact, the baby saying gorgeous at the beginning is one of Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds' daughters. Several of the lyrics like You've Ruined My Life by Not Being Mine and I'm So Furious at You For Making Me Feel This Way sound angry, but they're really not. In my personal opinion, this is one of the songs on the album that sounds most like old Taylor. It's an upbeat love song and we get that starry-eyed storytelling typical of a Taylor Swift song. Getaway Car is another song that sounds like typical Taylor, but the Bonnie and Clyde references tie the song back into the album's earlier themes. Also, titling the song Getaway Car suggests a sort of escape from something, and it feels like that something is all of the drama and scandal. The lyrics also make a getaway car into a metaphor for her new relationship, with Taylor Fields as a refuge from the scrutiny and a welcome change from her previous relationships. Still, throughout the song lingers Taylor's understanding this new relationship could also be temporary, as most relationships are. Getaway Car sounds like a song that could have easily fit on 1989, not only because of its lyrics, but also its synth-pop production. But thematically, it's from a more mature perspective than either joking about her previous relationships not lasting, thinking something fleeting will turn into a relationship, or expecting all of her relationships to last forever. It's very normal for Taylor to write a song where she kind of makes a joke about something that's being said about her in the media. On 1989, it was definitely blank space where she was like, yeah, you're right. I'm not looking for a real relationship. I'm just trying to fill the role of boyfriend. I've got a blank space. Who wants to fill it? On Reputation, it's this is why we can't have nice things. The whole song sounds like Taylor shrugging and laughing throughout, even though she's talking about her attempted character assassination. In a verse, she calls out Kanye directly by saying, it was so nice being friends again. There I was giving you a second chance, but you stabbed me in the back while shaking my hand. And therein lies the issue, friends don't try to trick you, get you on the phone and mind twist you. And so I took an axe to amended fence. Reputation as an album is an attempt to show that Taylor Swift the entertainer and media creation and Taylor Swift the person are different. This is characterized well by the opening of her song Delicate, which reads, This ain't for the best, my reputation's never been worse, but you must like me for me. In Dress and Dancing With Her Hands Tied, Taylor admits how her experiences have hardened her heart, but that doesn't mean that she's incapable of love. Reputation also shows how the scandal shifted Taylor's public perception from America's sweetheart to a mean girl who was always in a conflict with someone. She points this out in songs like Endgame where she says, I swear I don't love the drama, it loves me. Critics praise Reputation for taking listeners on a journey. In their review, Rolling Stone said, the album is a song cycle about how one stops chasing romance and defining their life based on others' perspectives and instead starts to let life happen on its own. They were of the opinion that it was both Taylor's most intimate and most mature work yet. The New York Times called Taylor a songwriter whose two poles were either swooning or thriving on antagonism. They also noted that her musical shift on reputation seemed to have Taylor following pop trends rather than creating her own. In their review, they said, the ideas that Miss Swift and her producers are borrowing from have been long simmering in the pop mainstream. Nothing here is the same jolt as when she imported a dubstep drop into I Knew You Were Trouble in 2012, back when that was still novel. What's notable, though, is that she hasn't gone to the innovators of these ideas, but rather used Mr. Martin and Mr. Antonoff as alchemists and filters. In their review, Pitchfork said, For Swift, plunging headfirst into pop has meant leaving behind the short stories on 2008's Fearless or 2010's Speak Now and relying more on snippets of vivid imagery and detail. She leans on characters, some old and some new, the unrepentant brat, the swooning dreamer, and the determined seductive adult. The Look What You Made Me Do video is prescient in at least one respect. Reputation collects half a dozen different aspects of Swift and lines them up in a row. You leave the album with a new appreciation for her versatility, for the way the tough-talking schemer of I Did Something Bad and the infatuated android of King of My Heart can share the same track list. Overall, they rated Reputation a 6.5 out of 10, which is pretty low for Taylor Swift. Their biggest criticisms were her more vengeful songs like Look What You Made Me Do because they were inspired by events Pitchfork felt Taylor never should have responded to. In their words, Taylor was trying to settle scores long past their expiration date on her album. They also called her version of modern pop sadly conventional. A lot of the reviews of Reputation point to the album being as divisive a work as Taylor was a person at the time. For every critic praising Taylor's revenge-filled anthems, there was another calling them tired. For every critic praising Taylor's truncated songwriting, there were some who missed her expansive narrative storytelling. Of course, the flop-era allegations must be addressed. 
Commercially, Reputation obviously didn't flop. In its first week, it sold 1.2 million copies, only about 50,000 less than 1989. Reputation was Taylor's fourth album to debut atop the Billboard 200 and her fourth to sell over a million copies in its first week. Her fifth, Midnight's, is the only album to achieve this since Reputation. And since Reputation, Taylor has held the record for most albums to exceed a million copies in first week sales. Overall, Reputation has a fan rating of 4.9 out of 5 stars. Several fans said it was nice to see Taylor experiment musically and enjoyed all of the Easter eggs within the era. Despite that, prior to Lover, many considered Reputation to be Taylor's flop album. A lot of this was brought on by Look What You Made Me Do being the first single. At first, some fans were hesitant about how the rest of the album would sound and hoped the era wouldn't only produce music about Taylor's feuds. Others criticized Taylor for making music for her haters rather than her supporters who would mostly be the ones listening. Even those who didn't mind the subject matter just didn't seem too thrilled with the song itself. It also seems like a lot of the unfounded hate for Reputation came not because the album was awful, but because it was cool to hate Taylor Swift at the time. Even some who couldn't fully get behind Reputation acknowledged it wasn't a bad album and was a necessary move for Taylor's career at the time. Those who didn't claim its chart performance compared to her other albums is proof of its inferior quality. Others blame Reputation's chart performance on lack of promotion. There were also criticisms saying the Reputation era felt like a cash grab. For its first few weeks, the album wasn't available on streaming services. Those who wanted to hear it either had to buy a physical copy or purchase a digital download. This reminded some fans of Taylor's decision in 2014 to remove her catalog from streaming, claiming streaming didn't fairly compensate artists for their work. In 2015, she prevented 1989 from appearing on Apple Music after they offered a three months free trial, explaining that she was informed artists wouldn't get royalties during that period. Taylor's music didn't return to streaming platforms until June of 2017. Reputation was 2018's best-selling album in the US and third best worldwide, selling over 2.3 million units. It was, however, Taylor's slowest album at the time to reach the 2 million mark, taking longer than her previous albums combined. Still, Reputation finished a top Billboard's year-end chart. In 2018, Taylor promoted Reputation with a stadium tour. It spanned from May to November and grossed nearly $350 million across 53 shows. The tour received overwhelmingly positive reviews. Taylor was praised for her stage presence, costumes, set list, and the show's production quality. The stages and set pieces were larger than life, yet Taylor didn't get lost in them and commanded the stage throughout the entire show. The tour is considered a career high for Taylor and her best tour to date. Her emotions throughout the show are as diverse as the set list, going from badass to enamored to gleeful to broken and wistful. Billboard said this was Taylor's first tour that showed her as a real human being rather than an extension of her prior innocent persona. In their review, they said, Introducing a production-heavy, moodier vibe with her sixth album, Reputation, it seems Swift's next tour may be a different experience than her past productions, and it is, but in a way that doesn't overshadow what she's done before. Instead, the Reputation tour shows the Taylor Swift she's meant to be all along. Overall, Reputation is an album that makes perfect sense given the context it was released in. It was Taylor's answer to all the media scrutiny and the shift in her public perception during that time. It also seemed like an answer to those who criticized her for always being vocal about the conflict she was in rather than staying quiet and letting them blow over. It's been a long-standing debate as to how much artists should write about life events or how long they have to write about them before they're irrelevant. But Taylor has shown time and time again that if she wants to write about something or someone, she will, no matter the effect on her reputation. At the very least, it allows her to share her perspective on the narratives about her even the ones she never asked to be a part of. This was such a fun video to do for me because I think Reputation is the only Taylor Swift era that I actually followed as more than a casual fan and was following pretty closely, you know, from start to finish. And I personally just love the Reputation album. To me, it's no skips and it's the Taylor Swift album that I play most often. And I think what's great about it is that Taylor experiments with so many different genres and sounds and it's just different from traditional Taylor Swift to the point where you just can't get bored listening to Reputation. And even after watching the Reputation tour on Netflix, I was just blown away. Like I think I've seen it three or four times because it's just such a good concert. And like I said earlier, it is on Netflix. So if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend watching it. I remember when I watched it, I was like, you know what? I could go to a Taylor Swift concert and have a good time. Maybe that's not in the cards anymore because of this whole Ticketmaster fiasco, but from the looks of it, it seems like Taylor puts on an amazing show. 
So definitely let me know your thoughts on reputation and the whole era. Like, what are your favorite songs on the album? Where would you rank it in Taylor's discography? Things like that. Also, let me know if you think it was, you know, a valid or a good response to the scrutiny that Taylor was receiving around the time that she decided to make the album. As always, thank you all so, so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe so that you can stick around for more. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter so that you can keep up with me there. And if you would like to become a channel member, you can click the link in the description of this video. See you all so very soon. Bye-bye.